momentum conservation problem that I would categorize as a collision problem, meaning two things are moving um, toward each other, and then they collide, and we're looking at what happens with their momentum. Um, in this case, the problem says a 2,000 kilogram freight car initially moving at six meters per second collides with a 1,000 kilogram freight car that was initially at rest. They stick together. What is their final speed? So with problems like this, when we're dealing with momentum conservation, I like to do a process that might seem like overkill, but it's really helpful for finding the answer. And that is I like to draw a before picture and an after picture and put all the information I have on that picture. So beforehand, we have this large train car that is moving and this slightly smaller train car that's not moving. And then afterwards, they're going to collide and stick together. So presumably the big one slows down a little bit, the little one speeds up a little bit, and they move off at the same velocity. Uh, so there's the picture before, and here's after. And now let's put the numbers on the diagram as well. Um, beforehand, you know, this uh, train car is 2,000 kilograms. And its velocity beforehand is 6 meters per second. This little guy here, its mass is 1,000 kilograms. And its velocity is zero. It's not moving. Afterward, this one is still 2,000 kilograms. The little one's still 1,000 kilograms. We don't know either their velocities afterward, but they're stuck together, so they must have the same velocity. And, you know, as long as we have mass and velocity for both these things beforehand, we may as well uh, have the momentum, which is mass times velocity. So for the big car beforehand, 2,000 is the mass, 6 is the velocity, so its momentum beforehand is 12,000 kilogram meters per second. For the little car, when we do its mass times its velocity, its momentum beforehand is zero. It's all basically set up. Now the really key thing about momentum problem is, is if you include everything, there's no outside forces, then we can say that the total momentum in this picture is the same as the total momentum in this picture. Basically, this momentum plus this thing's momentum equals this thing's momentum plus this thing's momentum. That's a huge statement of physics that momentum is conserved. That the P, momentum, total before is equal to the momentum total afterward. And before we have two things of momentum. Well, I guess this one really is not. But we have the big car, its momentum, and the little car. And afterward, this has momentum, and this has momentum. We don't know what either of our momenta is, but if we just say we're looking for this velocity, that's our unknown, we can write it in terms of that unknown. Momentum is mass times velocity. We don't know the velocity, but we know that whatever velocity it has, if I multiply times the mass, that'll tell me the momentum for this one. Um, for this one, same situation, just different mass, but same velocity. So we keep calling it V. This is moving at the same speed as this because they're stuck together. We assume that. All right, so the total momentum beforehand equals the total momentum afterward of this momentum plus this momentum. Since the total is, is 12,000 beforehand, that means this has to add up to 12,000 afterward, and you can really easily go ahead and solve for the velocity of those stuck together items afterward. So again, with momentum problems, if there's no outside forces, if you have an isolated system that's fine to say the total momentum before is equal to total momentum afterward, as long as you account for everything's momentum before, it should add up to the exact same number as the total momentum afterward.